Hey Jaffa Adventures, Terry King here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk lithium batteries. So I have always viewed myself as a bit of an innovator, or probably more correctly, an early adopter of innovation. And lithium batteries are an example. You might be saying to yourself, hey Terry, I call BS on that. Lithium batteries have been out forever. And they have been out for a long time, but where they're not used very popularly is in an underbonnet installation. And in this installation, I had a crap load of comments saying, hey Terry, lithium batteries don't like the heat. No good for underbonnet installations. But in all of those comments, I never saw any empirical data. I've never saw any test results of somebody who's actually done it and had a bad experience. Only this anecdotal feedback. So lithium batteries came down in price to a point where I was ready to pull the trigger. I love the fact that they weigh a third of the weight of a lead battery. I love the fact that they've got a massive capacity and you can take them down to 20%. And I love the fact that they've got many more regeneration cycles than a lead battery. I've had it in the cruiser now for a good seven months and I've flogged the bejesus out of this battery. It's been in off-road trips with corrugations from hell. It's had heat, it's had cold. I've discharged it down to its floor of 20% and it's had countless regeneration cycles from that floor. So I thought this would be a good time now to actually do a capacity test on this battery. What's happened over time? Has it lost its efficiency and its capacity to hold charge? And that's what this video is about. It's going to give you some real life empirical evidence about what happens when you install a lithium battery under the bonnet of your car and flog it to death. I'll detail my test methodology and I'll show you the results of those tests. Come on the journey, you won't be disappointed. So in this experiment we'll need four items. We'll need a lithium battery, that's obvious. We'll need something to provide a continuous current draw. In this case, it'll be my Travel Buddy oven. We'll need something to record that current draw. In this case, it'll be the Victron Connect app. And we'll need something to graph our results, which will be a simple Excel spreadsheet. All right, let's open up our Victron Connect app. And as you can see there, we've got full battery charge, 14.36 volts. It's drawing no amps at the moment. So we're all fully charged and ready to go. Let's pop the travel buddy on and we'll get this test underway. All right, travel buddy is on. She's pulling a little over eight amps, 8.2 amps. I'll let that amperage stabilize. I think it normally sits around the 8.41 amps. And once that's stabilized, that'll be the number that I use to do our graphing and our calculations. We'll Open the door up to the travel buddy and the reason for that is it once it gets to temperature it cycles and I don't want it to cycle. I'd like it to keep steady on heat the whole time. So we'll leave that door open so that the thermostat keeps it running for the full test duration. And we'll start our stopwatch of course. Alright, it's been a couple of minutes now. That amperage is stabilized at 8.55 amps. I'm also curious to see whether the battery generates any heat as it's being discharged. So at the moment it looks like it's 4 degrees Celsius. It is the morning so it's cold. Alright, we're an hour into it. Let's have a look at what our battery's doing. We're down to 93% and the old travel buddy is still pulling that 8.6 amps. It's gone up a little bit. Okay, we're at the three hour mark and we'll have a look at what our battery is down to. Now, I won't bore you doing this every single hour on the hour because we'll carry that data in the graph. So we're pulling still 8.6 8 amps, 8.7 amps, voltage down to 13.02, battery saying 78% remaining. All right, well, I'm not going to bore the crap out of you guys by running through that um, same data every single hour for the next 10 or 12 hours or however long it takes. 
but I will compile that all in a spreadsheet and I'll graph it out. And when we're finished the testing, I'll show you that data and you can make a determination for yourself whether you think this battery has run down over the last seven months more than what you would have expected. Cool, so let's keep the test going. I'll see you guys at the end of the day. Just a quick check in, we're seven hours into it and our state of charge is at 48%. Well, it's hour number nine now and I've been checking the battery temperature every hour since we started this experiment and it has been bang on ambient temperature. I just wanted to know whether the battery actually generated any heat as it was discharging and the answer to that question is an emphatical no. Okay, so how should this battery perform from new? It's got a rated capacity of 120 amp hours. It's got a low amperage cutout of 20%, which means that we should get 96 amps of usable battery on it. It also means that the floor amperage is 24 amps. So as soon as it drops down to 24 amps, the internal brains of the system should cut the battery off. The travel buddy load in this experiment has an average of 8.97 amps draw. So if we take our 96 usable amps, we divide it by 8.97 amp draw, that means we should get 10.7 hours out of this battery. And 10.7 hours equates to 10 hours and 42 minutes. So that is all theoretical based on a brand new battery. The results look something like this. Here's our hours in column C. Here's our theoretical percentage based on that draw of 8.97 amps. So basically in hour zero, we've got a full amperage load of 120 amps. Hour one with a draw of 8.97 amps takes us down to 111. Hour two takes us down to 102 all the way through to 10 and 3 quarters amps when we get down to that floor of 24 amps. And that's when we're at 20% and that's when the intelligence in the battery cuts it off. And that looks like this on a graph. The actual percentages that we've got are here, recorded here. And that's come directly off of our Victron Connect app. So 100% in hour zero, in hour one we were at 93, in hour two we were at 83, all the way down to 20% at our 10 and 3 quarters hours or our 10 hours and 45 minutes. These are the actual discharge amperages and this variance from theoretical is basically our delta. We had a theoretical amperage of 120. We had an actual amperage of 120. Therefore, there was no variance. In hour one, theoretically, we were saying we should have 111 amps. We actually had under 111.6, so the variance is negative 0.6. That is our theoretical discharge over time. And if we overlay our actual discharge over time, we get a graph that looks like that. And those two graphs could not be closer to one another than if you tried. This is telling us that our current capacity of this battery and its discharge rate is almost identical to the theoretical capacity using our discharge. That is a sensational result. That's telling me that after seven months worth of abuse, this battery is performing just like it did when it came out of the factory. Well, there you have it guys, the results of the capacity test on my lithium battery. And I was absolutely stoked with the results and very, very surprised. To maintain 100% capacity over the course of the last seven months when I flogged the living daylights out of this battery is just amazing. I'm super stoked with that. So to all the keyboard warriors out there that are telling me and everybody else, oh, lithium batteries don't like heat. The only thing I've got to say to you guys Lead is dead. I'll test this battery again in another year's time and see how it goes, but I'm super stoked with the results that I've got here now. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, spread the lithium love around the country, and I'll see you on the next tech video or perhaps even on the trails. Keep the shiny side up, everybody. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.